Well, I know that, that uh, I think most Mondays I, I mentioned this, but, but today, certainly all the way, uh, felt the excitement to get back with, uh, with this group. And it was good to get going. And, uh, and obviously, you know, we've got an opportunity to, to improve, right, and learn from lessons of the, really the first two games. And for those that have played longer, you know, how do you apply all the lessons you've learned and and put it into having making this the best week? You know, and talk all the time and, and hit again on it that you know the week uh, of preparation is so important because it you know just to give you a chance to have a chance in the game and then game day you go out and you you get to play the game. But it's uh, to me it's so important that you have a great week and. and and uh, like the way we started today, and we need to continue to have a great week. Yeah. Paul, well, you talked a little bit about the offensive line, the penalties, and maybe not getting as much movement at the point of that. In reviewing the tape, what were some of the things that jumped out? Were some of the pen penalties avoidable, and also the not getting movement at the point of attack? What, what needs to change there? Yeah, I think that um, when you look at it, you always start with. You know, are they do they know what they're doing and they they going all out and you know we had a couple early that, that we had some uh, mistakes of not uh, doing something that they've done a ton right so you got to got that's not giving yourself a chance on it and then um, you know one thing I do I know about this group is they will do everything they can you know what I mean they're they're putting it out there and um, and again, some of the penalties. You know they 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 come up and and uh, you know some are definitely avoidable. You know you, you have a hands to the face. You know you can't can't do that. And you've got some where you know guys are going and it, it, the game happens fast, right? And, and but that's why you you go back and you got to rely on your fundamentals. You know kind of where you're at. And and I think when when you get off it, and it's not just the that, that's across the board. You know, I mean, the penalties were, uh, you know, some in the old line, or some, you know, the, the, you know, the, the cut block was, you know, Braylon's kind of back coming and Ferk got in late on it. You know, I mean, it's that was a, um, I think I see what they if they just saw the end of it, I get what they see. Um, you know, tight ends, you know, across the board, just you got to play clean. You got to play with great. That's why details matter and the fundamentals matter so much. You know what your pad level is, and, and um, but, but they're, they're working at it and, and they and they value it. So I'm you know but but obviously we got those those become tough. There's times we overcame, you know, and there's some times we didn't overcome. Just Paul, to piggyback off that question, a bit, we went back and evaluated all the miscues in whole, whether it was penalties or special teams or turnovers. Do you feel like a lot of these are very correctable, or are you a bit further away than you would hope to be two weeks into the season? No, I think they're, you know, I do believe they're correctable, you know, and I think that, uh, you know, last last drive we jump off sides, that, that's something you get out of correct, right? I'm not saying it won't ever happen again, but, you know, that's correctable. And then you, I think you got to then continue to look, okay, are we, What's causing those things? Is there, you know, some form of indecision? Is there communication? And um, on that one, there wasn't. But you don't even want to. You can't assume anything. You know, um, take the delay coming out of the, you know, the injury timeout. You know, you have to address that and, and make sure that everyone has the awareness and the urgency there. And that, you know, some of the, you'll always get some. You know, we had I thought a couple, of, you know, holding calls kind of the way that where the. We had one where the ball really did hit on the backside, and you don't think it's going to kind of put in the, um, That's one of the dangers of that, of that when you hit it back there. You know what I mean? That it, it goes. And so I think that I do feel turnovers wise absolutely correctable. You know what I mean? The, you know, how we're, how we're carrying it. You know, Clay's on that one. You know, the most dangerous is always going to be from behind. You know, and then the next one's the second guy in. You know, but. Having proper fundamentals, and you know, we had a couple other ones. I thought we were swinging the ball, and we had to clean up the ones that didn't. We didn't fumble on, you know. And I think Graham's was absolutely 
uh, correctable and, and, and avoidable, you know? So I think, uh, yeah, I mean, there are things that, you know, I'm not saying we've arrived, but, but we can, we can, you know, I'm not discouraged that we can't clean that up. Cool. Well, if you evaluated the running back, especially Braylon, do you feel like he might need to be a little bit more decisive in where he's running? Because it seems like he's trying to look for the big play, maybe not taking those shorter games that help to keep the offense on schedule. Yeah, I think that, you know, that um, I think he's been really focused on trying not to do that. Uh, you know, I think there's a couple, you know, we had a couple perimeter runs where, you know, if a guy flashes, then you're coming back and it's not designed to cut back, then it's going to, it's going to be tough, you know, and you get chased from behind. Well, that's probably the reason why you're trying to put it on the outside, you know, so it, it goes, uh, the beautiful thing about this game is it, it takes everyone, you know, and, and, uh, and so I think there's, you know, each one of us has areas that, you know, we can continue to clean up and work on and, and, and yet the beauty of the game is it, it takes all 11 and when all 11 are on it's, it can be really pretty and you know when it's when that doesn't happen then make it a little bit harder. Steve? For one, there aren't a lot of position coaches around the country who make that switch from offense to defense or vice versa the way Bob Bostet has. I'm just wondering how much of an advantage do you think that kind of versatility is for an assistant coach? And why do you think there aren't more guys who kind of make that move? I know there are some unique circumstances around his switch, right. just in general. I, I don't know that I can speak on the whole. You know, I, I know I can speak specifically on, on Bob, and, and I think we've got a number of coaches that, that fit that. And I think something that I truly value is that I believe a, a good coach is just that a good coach and whatever the position uh, is and, and you know obviously it helps when you've got a background you know what I mean it's but I think uh, good coaches they know how to teach and, and they have a style of teaching and then they know how to drill whatever it is that they're that they deem most important for the position you know the, what are the fundamentals of playing that position and I think that's what um, I think Bob does it extremely well. You know, like I said, we've got, we've got a number of coaches on this staff that, that you can put them into any room and just the way they see the game and approach it and, okay, what does, what does that player need to be able to do uh, to be successful at it? And then how do you drill that and how do you get them to understand? I think that that's one thing he, he does well and then he's relentless on, uh, on the fundamentals. Jake, I'll... Uh... We saw Keontes come up with a couple of big catches last week. How, what skill sets do you feel he brings to this offense that can allow those more dynamic plays to move the chains? Yeah, I think, you know, he's, uh, I think he's a competitive, talented player. You know, he's got uh, the game of football. He understands is a, is a contact sport and he's, willing to do that, you know, so I, early in the first game and, and, you know, he's got that ability in him and he, he, can, he can run he's got a good receiving radius and, and uh, I think he likes the game of football. Jack? Yeah. Well, I think one of the one of the things we talked to preseason about Graham was when it's third down, do your part to help keep the chains moving. How would you assess, I know it's for early two games, but how would you assess what he's done on third down? in his what things he can control to yeah control. yeah i think that he's um i think he's done a number of number of he's had a number of plays done a number of things where it's okay this is what it should be like and, and then um you know kind of make it like all competitors you got to get to where you still you, know, you can't you can't try to make a play. You gotta let plays come, and when they come, you gotta be ready to okay. seize it. And and I think, you know, each game there's been a couple of those where I thought he's tried to make a play, and I think there's been a number of them where I've liked where he's already presented himself and he trusted it, and and that, and so I think he's certainly seeing it. Like when you come off, and you know, he he's knowing that, and and. He's done a good job of kind of understanding. You're talking about particularly on third down, kind of the looks that you know you're going to get a. You know nowadays you're going to kind of have your normal down and distance package, and then you're going to see the the different looks 
on third down and, and you, you and I both know, we all know that as the season progresses, you'll you only get more and more looks at it, but I like the way that he started there. Oh, it felt like Graham took a lot more shots on field yeah, uh, Saturday. Is that kind of what you guys can add to the offense, the personnel, or is that a product of what of how Washington State was playing you guys? Yeah, I think you're right. He, he did, and I thought there was a couple times it was I thought it was a good decision, and there's a couple that I thought uh, might have been fortunate. But I think that you know a lot of plays you've got the ability to do it, and then it comes down to playing. You, you trust it, then go with it. And then the thing that I liked about what he did was I don't think he had any question in his mind. You know, I think that you go back and look at it and, and talk through it with him and. There's some that uh, you just got to kind of assess the assess the whole play and, and, and play each play. But I thought that um, you know, the thing he's playing with, I think, more now uh, that he's got to continue to grow and, and con continue building on. But I think he is playing a little bit more conviction. Paul, um, at the start of the second half, on that uh, when the kickoff return it looked like. Uh, uh, Jack was maybe was the first guy who missed missed the tackle. Then I guess I was just wondering, can you speak to one the challenges you know kickers you know face and coming down and trying to make plays like that, and in terms of preparate, preparing a kicker to tackle given the injury risks right. there, how much do you put you know do they get an opportunity to even work on that kind of stuff? Yeah, um, really fair. I mean, we do ask them to. Uh, to fit in the coverage, and um, you know we we drill it a lot. No, we're not drilling it live, right? And there's a there's a difference, and um, you know it helps when you know there's a couple guys who were positioned there, and, and uh, you know wasn't seen what what happened to them. But um, you know I think that one thing we like about him being the kicker is he does have some. He's an athlete, you know, and he's got some physicality to him that uh, he can run, and you know he's part of that unit. And so I think that you know we've had it in the past, and you hope that he doesn't get to that point a lot of times. But we do ask him to be part of the, the coverage and, and do practice that and the work tackling drills and kind of the whole the whole whole deal, so that they, when they're in a position like that, you give them a fighter's chance. Cool. Well, on the field goal at the end of the third quarter, start of the fourth, was that situation that Vito preferred kicking to the north side, or did you just not want to have to try to rush that attempt with the clock running down at the end of the third quarter? And we just wanted to yeah, it, it was more the latter. Okay. You know, just kind of uh, hasn't expressed a strong this or that. And, and you know, it's just one of those things you kind of talk about or think about real quick, you know, as you go with it. But, um, Felt at the time that it wasn't enough to sway it, and then therefore wanted to make sure, okay, we got time and, and set, and so maybe we should have kicked it the other way. Steve, I know it's early in the season, but there are a handful of Big Ten running backs up near the top of the NCAA rushing statistics. Again, you look at all the running backs, JT included, in the NFL from the Big Ten. I was wondering, what's your explanation for why the Big Ten, year in, year out, seems to produce future NFL running backs and some of the top running backs in the country? Yeah, I mean, I don't have a great answer to that. It just, I believe it. You know, I've been around it, and, and it's really talented uh, running backs, and there's there's talent really at all positions. And, and so, um, you know, it's not surprising to me. I didn't. You know, I haven't done a deep dive on it, but uh, doesn't surprise me. Got time for two more, Jesse. Well, when you have a kicker who misses a couple tries like that, especially maybe early in his time doing that at the college level, um, how much do you spend maybe talking to him about that to make sure his head's in a good space? And how much do you feel like you have to evaluate, you know, whether Nate could potentially fill that role? What's the balance in, in striking that with somebody? Yeah, I mean, I think that you're. Uh, you know, we'd have a pretty thin roster if we, you know, the guy makes a mistake and and then that's that's it, right? And and I think that we certainly have 
uh, confidence in him and trust in him and and also understand that happens right and and so I think that you're you know you're always I think every athlete is always competing with themselves first and foremost you know and then uh, how do you how do you help them and I think the big thing is you know going back to your fundamentals you know whenever I think it doesn't matter what position but I think it applies to all certainly that you know if you find yourself struggling a little bit just go back to the fundamentals and the basics and then um, I don't think you can ever instill a false confidence in them but I think you can uh, remind them sometimes why we are confident in, in them as a player you know and it's again that goes across the board Paul you mentioned the fourth down play on Saturday just curious when looking back at the film we thought about the process of going for it and the play selection and uh, just kind of execution of the play and then how much do you keep that sequence in mind when making four thousand stitches later in the season? Yeah, I mean, it, it certainly, uh, you know, I think the, the, the result and therefore the play you ran, then, you know, you don't like it, right? I mean, but I do, I do want to, and I feel that it's, I think it's, it's good to put the game in the player's hands as well, right? And you try to have the balance. You know, I think it's important. Um, I do have confidence in our defense. And I also have confidence in our offense. And there are times when, you know what, they've got to, to win games, you've got you to take advantage and, and make those opportunities work for you. And the whole game is a risk, right? And, and so, uh, when it doesn't go your way, then we got to help each other, and, and, and I think that's, you know, that there's times where that kind of led off the sequence of, you know, we, we go for it, we don't get it, four plays later, they score, but I love the response then, you know, offensively, answer the score with a score, and then uh, really our defense had two, three and outs, you know, they gave us a chance, and we had a, a really important punt that, that landed, you know, down it inside the uh, five and then you know we get a three and out and they're punting from uh, backed up and we get good field position we score right so I think the game of football is those momentum swings and it's how do we all play together and play off each other but you know specifically you know it's yeah I mean if I if you knew the result you would never do it again but I also know that there's times when you do go for it and I think you gotta empower your players and, and go and, and and so that then, you know, how you go forward with it, kind of what you said, you know, what is the best play for this one? What is the best? And, and having your guys understand it and then go execute it. Because obviously it wasn't, we didn't execute, we didn't get it.